In this section, we're looking at similar solids. So we consider two solids similar. Um, if they're the same type, so the same type of solids, cylinders, pyramids, uh, cones, spheres, whatever the case may be, with equal ratios of corresponding measures called our height, radius, face, different measurements we may look at, and we consider those, again, similar solids. Now, the ratio between the two solids is called the scale factor. We've seen this before in similarity. When we had two similar triangles, maybe, we had uh, scale factor, and we typically wrote that as A over B, and that was the ratio of two sides that we could match up, and that ratio held within um, all the different measurements of the shapes. And then any two cubes or two spheres are similar. Now this is kind of an extra note we're going to add right here, kind of put that aside. If you think of two cubes where all the sides are the same, they're going to be similar. They're just going to be cubes, maybe just different sizes, same shape, different size. And then two spheres will always be similar because they're going to have a, a round object like that, no matter how small or how large, they're the same shape, different size. So those we're not going to focus on too much. It's all the other ones that are not necessarily similar. Like down below, we have uh, two cylinders. Maybe we compare measurements, and it's still going to have the same scale factor between them. We could have two pyramids here, where maybe we're looking at base length, base height, uh, the height of the pyramid, the uh, slant height, which is a popular one on the outside. We're going to have those values to compare to see if they're similar. So it's that same idea we've seen in similar triangles. We even mentioned this a little bit in the area, looking at the area of similar uh, polygons. So, the similar solids theorem. So we start with if two similar solids have the scale factor of AB. So we say scale factor, or it's also called the ratio of the sides. Either one. We call that A over and then we have the ratio of the areas. And this is what we looked at in the previous chapter, which you go back and watch, and that was a squared over b squared. So we actually squared the scale factor to get to that. New one is the ratio of the volumes. And this is going to be a to the third, b to the third. So now we're actually going to cube the scale factor uh, to get to the ratio of the volumes. And we're going to see a few different types of examples that do that. So if you're not sure at the moment to where we're going with this, let's see some examples and you'll start to see how it all fits into the process. But a couple things I want you to be aware of before we start. Let's think of the scale factor if we're looking at just sides. Those are always units, inches, centimeters, feet. In area, we have units squared. And then in volume, we have units cubed. And if you notice, as we look at the way we label the units, it actually is the way we also have the exponents for A and B. Scale factor is A over B. It's just in units, feet or inches or some measurement. Areas, A squared over B squared. Now we're looking at units squared, inches squared, centimeters squared, square feet, on from there. Third one, ratio of the volumes is now cubed. So we change that one as well. So we could also start to see, as we change between them, Maybe if I'm at scale factor and I want to go to area, I'm going to square it. If I'm scale factor and I want to go to volume, I'm going to cube that. If I want to go back in the opposite direction, I'll take the square root or the cube root and it allows me to simplify. So we're going to typically use the scale factor to the areas and then the scale factor to the volumes. If we did want to go area to volume, we'd go back through the scale factor. So let's work through a few examples and see. So top one we have if the uh, re right rectangular prism is similar to the right rectangular prism shown to the right. So let's just label this one. I'm going to label this one 1 and this one 2. And eventually we'll get to 3. So first we want to see if 1 and 2 are similar. So if we start labeling the measurements, uh, that front side length of the base is 4 and 8. Then I could go maybe the, the height of the base, that de the depth we have there is 2 and 4, and then the height of the prism is 2 and 2. So if we look at these, they actually simplify, and I get 1 half, 1 half, and 1, which is a problem because that's not equal. Because that's not the same, they don't have the same scale factor. And so we're going to say that they are not 
similar. Okay, let's move on to the second one. Now we're going to compare 1 and 3. So that front length is 4 to 6, then 2 to 3 is the depth, and the height is 2 to 3. Well, this one, we get that the scale factor, they all reduce to the same thing, 2 thirds. So two units on the first one matches up with three units on the second one. That is the ratio between them. Since that scale factor is the same, we are going to say they are similar. Okay, now let's go down and try two more. I'm going to use that one and two. So front side is 12 and 9. The depth is 16 and 12. The height is 4 and 3. I reduce, I get 3 over 2, oops, not 3 over 2, how about 4 over 3, 4 over 3, and 4 over 3. They all reduce to be the same thing. If they all reduce to the same thing, we would say they are similar. And even though they're not asking, well, they say explain the reason, we would say that the scale factor is 4 thirds. Okay, next one here, I'm going to call this one 1 and 2. I'm going to compare the heights, that's 15 to 10, and the radius 10 to 5. I reduce and I get 3 over 2 and 2 over 1. They are not the same, so therefore they do not have the same scale factor, so we would say they are not similar. Now, they are both cones, and that doesn't change. They're still both cones, but the key thing we have to see there is they're not similar to each other. They're not the same shape. They're not going to be looking the same way. And you could see as one would get larger, it just wouldn't match up. So let's try it now actually applying using the different uh, ratios that we look at. So two similar cil cylinders have volumes of 12 pi and 324 pi. We want to find the scale factor of the larger to the smaller. So if we look at the two, we're just going to do a quick sketch of them. I have a larger and a smaller, clearly, because the first one's volume is 12 pi, the second one's volume is 324 pi. So let's write those as a ratio of the volumes. And I get 12 pi over 324 pi. Now I'm going to reduce that. So let's see. 324, maybe it's divisible by 12. So it is. So actually we can reduce that to pi over 27 pi by dividing 12 by 12 and 324 by 12. But, well, let's simplify that even more, and actually it's just 1 over 27. So that's our ratio of the volumes. Now, if I want to go and find the scale factor, I need to get back to A over B. Where I'm right now is A cubed over B cubed. So I have to take the cube root here. Now, if you're not familiar with the cube root, you could just think, okay, what would I cube to get to that value? But we'll use the correct notation. This is saying cube root. So what to the third power is 1? Well, that's just 1. What to the third power is 27? Well, 2 times 2 times 2 is 8. 3 times 3 times 3, oh, it is 27. So the cube root would be 3. So our scale factor turns out to be 1 so the ratio of the sides is 1 to 3, whereas the ratio of the volumes is actually 1 to 27, so the volume is a lot greater. It doesn't ask for it here, but let's find the ratio of the areas, just if we needed to. So if I had the ratio of the areas, I would square the scale factor, and that turns out to be 1 over 9. Maybe that's one we'd have to see later. Okay, so we're going to work through these. We're going to find um, the surface area and the volume of the second solid. So the second one is not shown. So we're starting with A, and we've got to work through to find B. So scale factor is 3 to 2. So my ratio of my area would therefore be 9 over 4. So if it's 9 over 4, I could set that equal to the area of A, which is its surface area here, 324 pi, over the area of B, 
Let's write surface area of B as our subscript. So I'm going to do cross product between the two. I get 9 times the surface area of B equals 4 times 324 pi. 324 times 4 is 1296 pi equals 9 times the surface area of B. And now I'm going to divide that by 9. And I get 144 pi. That's our units, inches squared. Okay, now volume. Let's move this stuff up here. So my ratio of my volumes is going to be 3 over 2 cubed, which is 27 over 8. So I get 27 over 8 equals, and I'm looking for volume of B, that's 972 pi. So I'm going to do a little quick here. 972 times 8 gives me 7776 pi equals 27 times the volume of B, and that's just cross product. I now divide that by 27, and I get 288 pi inches cubed is my volume. So I found my surface area, I found my volume. Now we go on to the next one. Scale factors 2 over 1. So my ratio of my areas is 2 over 1 squared, which is 4 over 1. So now I'd say 4 over 1 equals the surface area of A over the surface area of B. Now this one turns out to be 4 times the surface area of B equals 864, which I can divide 864 by 4 and get 216 feet squared. For volume, I'm now going to take my scale factor and cube it. So that's 2 over 1 cubed, and I get 8 over 1. So now it's going to be 8 over 1 equals... I know volume of B goes on the bottom. That's 1728 on top. I get 8 times the volume of B equals 1728. I divide 1728 by 8, and it comes out to be 216 feet cubed. Okay, last one here. Scale factors 4 to 7, so my ratio of my areas is going to be 4 over 7 squared. That's 16 to 49. So that becomes 16 over 49 equals 64 pi over the surface area of B. Now instead of doing cross product, which we could always do, let's see if we can figure out a little shortcut here. If we look at 16... To get from 16 to 64, I'd multiply it by 4 pi. So that means I could almost do the same thing with 49, because it's really just changing the fraction. 49 times 4 is 196, so our surface area of B turns out to be 196 pi centimeters squared. You don't agree? Well, do cross product, and you'll see. Hopefully. Okay, next we go ratio of the volume. And that's going to be 4 sevenths cubed. 4 cubed is 64. 7 cubed is 343. So I have 64 over 343 equals 64 pi over the volume of B. Now, we look at it. We have 64, and then we went to 64 pi. Hopefully now you see all we did was just put a pi on the end, multiply it by pi. We'll do the same thing here and say that our volume of B is 343 pi centimeters cubed.